Hello and welcome, F5 community. In November of 2021, F5 began to release quarterly security notifications instead of ad hoc CVEs in an effort to simplify our customers' mitigation steps and to minimize response times and outages in the environments that they protect. At DevCentral, we're teaming up with F5 Security Incident Response Team and we'll be delivering coverage throughout the day to bring the absolute most up-to-date information to the community. Joining me today is Aaron Brailsford from the Security Incident Response Team. Aaron, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Kind of getting right at things. You've got some information to deliver to us in a readout of the QSN. So without further ado, what do you have for us today? I'm here to talk about the 19 issues that we're disclosing or that we have disclosed, given when you'll be watching this video, in the October QSN. First, to get something out of the way, the original disclosure date was October the 18th. You'll notice here that obviously this is October the 10th. We are committed to responding quickly to potential vulnerabilities in F5 products. And as with all publicly known vulnerabilities, F5 is committed to publishing a response as soon as the vulnerability is thoroughly investigated. In this case, one of the vulnerabilities in our QSN was sent to us by an external researcher and they informed us that their findings would be made public on October the 10th. To reduce the impact to our customers, we made the decision to move the October 18th QSN forward to October the 10th rather than have multiple disclosures within eight days of one another. So to get into the meat of it, we have 19 issues, like I say. We have one that is a critical severity for appliance mode only, high severity for regular deployments. As you might imagine, that is a control plane vulnerability. We'll talk about that um, a little more as we break the issues down. We have four vulnerabilities that were reported to us by external researchers, and probably for the first time in recording these videos, we have impact across our entire product suite. So Big IP, Big IQ, um, all variations of Next, APM Edge clients, several Nginx products, Aspen Mesh, and distributed cloud services. We'll break those down a little bit over the next slides. As always, we're announcing the date of the next QSN with this QSN, and that will be February 14th, 2024. Just to break those down, like I say, in terms of severity, we have one critical, but that for most customers is actually a high severity vulnerability, not a critical. So we have 10 highs, six mediums, and three exposures. Like I say, that first column will add up to 20 because one of them is counted twice. As you can see, most of them impact Big IP, but one or two of them impact other products like Big IQ, Big IQ Next, Nginx App Protect, Edge Client. We have some that impact the uh, Nginx range of products. They are still predominantly control plane, which is something we've seen in past QSNs, but this time we do have seven that impact the data plane and two that impact the Edge Client. For the Edge Client, those are both local only vulnerabilities. So similar to the last QSN, the attacker needs a presence on the client machine in order to exploit them. Um, and they're both Mac OS specific. As always, we recommend customers install the latest releases to be best protected. However, we do have to call out that for this QSN, if you're on 17.1 or 16.1 and you want to update to mitigate one of the vulnerabilities, I'm going to cover it in a little detail. You will need to go to both the latest release, so 17.103, 16.141, and an engineering hotfix. That engineering hotfix is specific to one vulnerability, the number there, CVE 2023-40534, but uh, you will need that, and it is going to be on my F5 on downloads. If you're already running an engineering hotfix, however, you'll probably want to open a case for support to make sure that the bugs you have in your current engineering hotfix are either fixed in 17.103 or 16.141, or to get a new engineering hotfix built to include your existing bugs, and the one bug that needs to be fixed on top of the base releases. The two edge client issues, one is fixed in client 7244 and the other is fixed in 7245. So obviously we recommend 7245, SBK 182, CNF 111, Big IQ CM 830. There's also an engineering hotfix referred to in the two Big IQ security advisories. We want to check that out. Again, those engineering hotfixes are available for download on my F5. Uh, so you don't have to do a trip through support to get hold of them. Just as a reminder that uh, 14.1 is going to go end of support at the end of this year on December 31st. So if you're on 14.1, you probably want to be looking towards 15, 16 or 17.1 as your long-term strategy because uh, you're 
running out of time to move off a release that is going to soon be orphaned. Now to spotlight the uh, the meat of this presentation. One of the things we disclosed today is the impact to us by what is known on the internet as the HTTP2 rapid reset attack or CV2023-44487. This was discovered by Cloudflare and reported to a number of vendors, including F5. We have some impact to Big IP, Nginx, and distributed cloud was impacted, but have made various infrastructure changes necessary to protect themselves and distributed cloud customers against this attack. Now, I'd like to highlight a couple of things. One, this issue, as it's described, is essentially a, a fundamental issue for any proxy or server handling HTTP2 traffic. The design of HTTP2 is such that clients can send multiple concurrent requests before receiving any responses. For those of you who are more familiar with the architecture of HTTP2, you'll know that clients can open multiple TCP connections. Those TCP connections contain multiple HTTP2 streams. And it's through that that a client can open in parallel several requests at once. In the case of some servers, perhaps as many as 100 concurrent requests, which is quite a departure from HTTP 1, where we had pipelining, but not typically seen to that level. The anatomy of this attack is that a client can open a single connection, TCP connection, request 100 resources, and then send 100 reset streams back to the server. Obviously, this ties up resources on the server end while it's trying to fetch 100 resources to send to the client that the client then abandons and can repeat that process over and over again. This was something that F5 foresaw during our threat modeling when we designed our HTTP2 parser for Big IP LTM and Next. And because of that, we have a value set for concurrent streams per connection, which we set to 10 smaller than some um, other products or some other systems. And if necessary, customers can consider reducing that setting if they believe they're under attack. We believe that 10 is a conservative enough value that actually the impact from this is, is largely mitigated already. If you have particular concern outside of that, you would have to disable HTTP2. Like I say, this is essentially a fundamental issue within the protocol. For Big IP Next, that value is fixed at 10. Again, we believe it to be conservative enough to protect most customers in most situations. Uh, the maximum you can set that number to, incidentally, is 256, but the default is 10. For Nginx, we believe the impact of this attack is, in reality, no worse than any other denial of service vector, uh, given the default configuration. There are some settings for Nginx that you can tweak to either further reduce the impact or restrict the ability of an attacker to carry out this attack. If you've raised those values from their defaults, you might be more exposed and we'd encourage people to check out the security advisory for the details on precisely which configuration elements they need to check out. Um, a blog post will be published on nginx.com going into further detail, F5 views on this, but that will not be out at 5 a.m. on the 10th. A couple of other things to highlight then. Um, I'm going to start with the one on the bottom of this page first. I noted earlier that you would need an engineering hotfix if you were going to 16.1 or 17.1. It is to resolve another issue with HTTP2 that is actually specific to HTTP2 if you are also using iRules or local traffic policies. It was discovered internally. It's unrelated to Cloudflare's research. It was unrelated to CVE 2023-44487. And 15.1 and earlier are not affected at all. So you don't require an engineering hotfix, nor do you need to upgrade to any specific version of 15.1 to resolve that CVE. The other thing to call out for this QSN then is the critical high. Uh, we mentioned it at the beginning. It's a critical severity only for appliance mode deployments. For regular deployments, it's a high severity. It requires an authenticated attacker, so someone with valid credentials to have access to the control plane in some way. But should they have those credentials of a low privileged user, they can gain concrete, complete control of the big IP. And that was also reported to us by an external security researcher at uh, the Zero Day Initiative, which is run by Trend Micro. That's all of the slides I have. Just to cover something off, I think we can all assume that, that everybody in the industry is going to be looking closely at the HTTP2 rapid reset attack at this point in time, and many people will be scrambling to respond to it. So hopefully our security advisory goes some way to answering questions that people will have. If there are any other questions, I believe we'll be having a live stream as well, right? That's correct.
So we will be having a live stream. Uh, check the Dev Central YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Dev Central. And uh, you will be able to find uh, uh, when that is occurring. And Aaron and I will be there with possibly some other guests uh, along the way, depending on how the day goes. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, Aaron, it's uh, greatly appreciated. No problem. Happy to be here. And thank you, F5 community, for tuning in. Customers should check the security advisories to get more information on these issues and get details on recommended mitigations. We recommend that customers ensure they are running the most current and applicable versions to optimize the security and performance of their systems. Quarterly security notifications align the public communication of vulnerabilities and security exposures across F5 deployable offerings into one date each quarter. Vulnerability, disclosure, and remediation is a key part of F5 security practices and a reflection on our efforts to stay vigilant and focused on constant improvement.